Under a rooftop designed to let in natural light, attendees of the so-called Summer Davos event in Tianjin, China, are discussing the power of the sun and other energy sources, exploring ways to scale up renewables in the face of a growing climate crisis. The global energy transition has been a key talking point here, with bold ideas and new approaches taking center stage. I think that what what's changed is how we talk about climate finance. Now, these conversations come at a critical moment. 2024 marked the hottest year on record, meaning people are using more and more energy to stay cool. Add that to a global electrification push and an AI boom, and demand for energy is surging. A World Economic Forum report says it jumped 2.2% last year, the fastest growth in a decade. The potential of artificial intelligence is part of the conversation and how it can build on ways it has already contributed to energy transition, from managing energy use and demand to forecasting weather. This could mean tapping AI's predictive potential to help governments prioritize projects in the future. Because resources, the biggest constraint is resources for any country in today's world, especially in a very geopolitically tense world, uh, where every country is, is prioritizing and spending on defense. So the, the, the resource availability for clean tech and climate tech is going down. So that's why we, you know, this idea is even better where I think about like prioritizing which projects are actually going to work on the ground. But AI itself could also contribute to this energy demand. AI is going to need a lot more data centers, and data centers are going to create a, a massive increase in the demand for power. So that's on one side of the equation. The other side of the equation, AI can be leveraged to improve efficiencies in all the different energy systems we have. The whole world it can be more energy efficient, can be more productive in terms of getting AI. But of course, people say AI uses a lot of data center capacity, and data center uses a lot of energy, and they use a lot of water to cool the data centers. But I do know that there are some data center companies, like three or four companies, all the new data centers are run by uh, renewable energy. Still, experts warn that momentum could stall, with financial and geopolitical concerns bringing competing priorities. U.S. President Donald Trump's re-election has also raised concerns about the climate commitments of America, the second largest emitter of greenhouse gases after China. The overall picture is a bit mixed. Uh, we see the, the opportunity to realign a little bit uh, the investments that are being made with some of these uh, new technologies, with clean technologies, with uh, dedicating a bit more to more resilient systems, energy systems, and to definitely increasing the commitment to a rebalancing of the energy mix in many of the countries. But bright spots remain, with industry leaders turning to countries such as China, whose heavy investment in the green energy transition throughout the years has made technologies cheaper and more accessible. It's a shifting landscape for sustainability, for climate and uh, energy. So in some parts of the world, there has been backtracking. Uh, backslashing and greenwashing, whatever you have. But in some other parts of the world, particularly in Asia, we're going forward. We're not stopping on our energy transition because we do understand that for future generations, we need to leave them with the right kind of resources. With Asia's biggest economies leaning in, leaders here hope action will ripple outward, turning ambition into global acceleration. Lauren Ong, CNA, Tianjin, China.